I have a slideshow which Amy's going to share in the chat. Um, uh, given that we are a smaller group than anticipated today, I think, um, some of the things that we had kind of planned uh, may uh, around breakout groups and stuff, we may just do in a big group. Um, so we're going to start with introductions. Uh, um, I am Ellen Lee. Uh, I'm a teaching assistant professor at uh, uh, the University of Pittsburgh, Amy Pistone uh, uh, at Gonzaga University, now officially associate professor that's at true University. yeah as of I, I think like today it's official <laughs> my, my title change officially kicks in as of my pay raise <laughs> um so uh in terms of what we got on the agenda today we're going to do some introductions like i said uh essential agreements um we had planned to do small breakout groups but maybe we'll just do them in the big group and just then cut this out of the video um, we're going to do a, a bit of what I call a, an overview of the TA instructor relationship to think through some things. Um, we'll do some reflection, some fold group discussion. We'll have a break at about two. Um, then we were planning to do breakout groups. We'll see how that works with the, the folks we have today. Um, and then uh, some additional discussion with a full group. However, however we want to make it work. Um, I want to introduce one more person, though, before we get started. Uh, Dora Gao um, is a grad student at the University of Michigan um, and is going to help with our facilitating from the grad student perspective today because Amy and I are now, uh, how did I put it a minute ago, our grad student experiences are kind of incre with increasing speed, like disappearing in the rear view mirror. Um, so uh, uh, we will have some some grad student perspective. Uh, and I, I think it's possible, Tora, that you're the only grad student here. <laughs> so um, I didn't quite anticipate that. So you you might have to help us out in a different way than originally anticipated. Um, so uh, let's with with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Um, uh, all right. So WCC's essential agreement. So basically, for the duration of the session, uh, we want uh, everybody to agree to be fully present and fully participatory. Um, that said, if if there are things where you cannot participate because you get pulled away for a minute or you're watching a kid or whatever it is um that's cool uh often um if you're not able to join in discussion if we do end up breaking into breakout groups just sending me or amy a message to let us know that that's the case is is great um we want to make sure everybody's uh um thinking about taking responsibility for our own assumptions uh about each other uh each other's intent so assuming good intent. Uh, three, we will hold ourselves accountable to do the work of sharing experiences and coming to new understandings. Four, we will be comfortable being in discomfort. Um, some of these issues, especially talking about um, kind of power imbalances may feel kind of weird for us. Um, and I think sometimes sitting in that weirdness and thinking about um, <clears throat> why we feel that way can be really helpful in thinking of new perspectives and new solutions. Um, and five, we will refrain from language or behavior that is threatening, harassing, or attacking of another participant. So that one, I think uh, that uh, goes without saying, I think in a lot of ways, except we should say it and often. <laughs> Um, okay, so those are our essential, essential agreements. Now let's get to jump in, I think, to some of the kind of content-based stuff today. Um, so I've spent the last couple of months coming up with a um, model TA instructor agreement because we didn't have one in our department. And at a, as SBB said, right, um, uh, we're gonna have TAs in our department for the first time in a while uh, this semester. Um, uh, so I was thinking a lot about this. Um, I was working with our grad students. So a lot of this, the development of this 
um, totally uh, is owed to the the um, our grad students, Natalie and Abigail, who uh, gave me notes on basically every version of this I, <laughs> I came up with. Um, Amy, you shared that in the chat, right? Sorry, I can't also see the chat while I'm doing stuff. I, I'm going to add it right now. I want it to be fresh, fresh in everyone's mind. I'll, I'll, and I'll reshare the slides just because we had, I know Suzanne, you had to pop out and pop back in. So I will share everything oh, yeah. afresh right now. Thank you. Um, so basically, uh, it is a, uh, as, a, as is want, uh, as I am want to do a longer document probably than it necessarily needs to be. But I wanted to give something that's kind of comprehensive that gives a lot of room for thought. Um, and a lot of room for adjustment. Um, so speaking of adjustment, one of the things that's kind of already come up a little bit is kind of this language around TAs or at Michigan GSIs or TFs or like whatever the terminology is. And it's interesting that as the terminology can somewhat be interchangeable, right? Um, uh, I think part of the reasoning at Michigan uh, um, of coming up with the title of graduate student instructor, right, was to make make it clear that the uh, graduate students are instructors in their own right, right? They're not just assistants. Um, they are growing and developing as instructors, right? Um, and that's a big part of the role. Um, teaching fellow is often sometimes sometimes the same thing as a teaching assistant, so, or sometimes that means you're the instructor of record in your own course. So there's a lot of terminology change. Um, so basically, anything I talk about here, you're going to have to suit to your own kind of context, I think. Um, uh, because all of this is kind of really variable based on institution and institutional rules, the department and the departmental culture, um, individual classes and instructors and kind of how classes work, um, as well as union contracts. Uh, which are always an important thing to keep in mind. Um, but I think some of the, the biggest tenants, the kind of premises underlying the creation of a TA instructor agreement um, is that basically what we're doing here, our goal is to foster positive working relationships between instructors um, and TAs, right? Uh, and that we're trying to um, ensure a high quality educational experience for students, right? Um, those are correlated goals, right? Um, they they exist independently of each other, but they also go together, right? You can't really have um, the high quality educational experience for students without that positive working relationship. Um, or hmm, I suppose it's possible, but it's not it's not ideal. Um, and as I was saying, right, that there's also no one size fits all option, right? Any agreement. Um, needs to be kind of a starting point for discussion. Uh, there's nothing that's gonna universally apply, right? Um, uh, our graduate students contracts say that they need to be working no more than 20 hours a week as uh, TAs. Another union contract somewhere else might say something different, right? So that that the terms of employment are often very different. Um, but also kind of departmental culture, right? So at Michigan, I think it was generally departmental culture that graduate students should hold office hours, right? Um, but in certain classes that was uh, subsumed by holding uh, Latin and Greek study hours, basically, um, during if you were teaching in the Latin program or, or things like that, right? So there might be, there are always gonna be little adjustments that need to be made. Um, so one of the things you'll notice if you take a look at this document is that there's a lot of like just blank spaces that are meant to be filled in. Um, because basically the point of creating a, an instructor uh, TA agreement, right, uh, is that not that it's all, it's, it's useful that it's all written down there in paper, but the real point is to prompt a conversation, um, that you're talking about this, um, together and coming up with some of these uh standards um so that everybody knows where ever everybody knows where we sit and everybody's kind of in, in agreement so mutual agreement is generally the best way to kind of agree on these things um or to to develop this uh instructor uh, ta instructor agreement um 
Another kind of basic premise here is that the best way to maintain sustain this kind of positive relationship is first by establishing these um, clear expectations, consistent channels of communication, um, and then maintaining them, right? So uh, I, like I said, I suggest using a document like this, um, but basically whatever way, right, that you come up with a kind of these clear expectations, clear channels of communication. Um, and then maintaining them while allowing for a reasonable degree of flexibility and adaptability, right? We are in fact, all humans um, and folks are gonna need um, flexibility. Uh, not every, you're, you know, if you make a rule that says TAs have to come to every uh, instructor meeting over the course of the semester and then someone has car trouble or is, gets sick or whatever, right? What what does that mean, right? We have to have a degree of flexibility just like we do in our in our teaching um, with students. Uh, um, but also come up with ways uh, to think about this, this agreement, not necessarily as being an inflexible contract that has penalties when people get things wrong, um, but instead something that is is meant to be in some ways a living document that can show people what the expectations are gonna be, but also give us an opportunity to address things um, when conflicts arise or when flexibility is needed, basically. Um, okay, so basic premises uh, that I'm kind of pulling from here. Uh, so the TA instructor agreement should always be based on mutual respect and collaboration. Um, uh, I've seen versions of this document that only outline kind of uh, what the TAs are responsible for and not what the instructor is responsible for. Um, and I think that's that where is where we start to get into kind of some hazy territory about what the purpose of something like this is, right? Um, uh, the idea is kind of mutual agreement, mutual respect, and mutual collaboration, right? We are team teaching here, um, even though there may be a hierarchical hierarchical relationship necessarily inherent, right? Um, I think mutual respect is necessary. Um, so another thing that was always hit home for me at Michigan, that graduate TAs are both students and workers. Um, we, which means we faculty need to treat the our, our TAs both as colleagues and trainees, right? Um, this is on the job training. Um, we are responsible to mentor TAs in their development as educators, right? Um, which means the instructor's in kind of an interesting position where we need to balance our roles as mentor, as colleague, and as supervisor um, in ways that can be challenging, right? Um, but ostensibly that's something we do in our relationships with our other colleagues, um, especially junior colleagues, or, uh, um, but for folks who are junior colleagues, maybe new. Um, a new experience, um, no longer being on the bottom, the bottom rung of every hierarchical situation you've ever been in. Um, so something to kind of think about. Um, instructors and departments need to work, and this involves, sometimes can involve actual, uh, like time and labor, um, ensuring equitable and sustainable labor practices uh, to minimize the risk of exploitation of graduate student labor. Uh, as we know, right, the way universities work these days, um, this is the university run as a business model that has persisted for the last few decades. Um, graduate student labor is cheap and universities want to use it and squeeze every dollar out of it that they can. Um, and it's our job as the kind of, uh, as faculty, as the people in the middle, right, um, to make sure that that is that risk is minimized as much as we possibly can, right? Um, there's no eliminating the risk, um, but developing our own positive culture of sustainable labor practices uh, is um, of utmost importance to make sure um, that we don't perpetuate 
inequalities in, in the university that are kind of systematically outside our control, um, that, but that, that we don't perpetuate them individually ourselves or within our departments. Um, and then kind of on that a similar note though, right, the TA assignments need to be equitable among TAs and correspond to contracted work hours. Um, I've heard from TAs concern, basically with a, uh, especially with gender concerns, right? That you're working with a group of TAs and uh, all the TAs who are women end up getting more, holding more office hours or getting more uh, of the assignments from the instructor or um, end up getting more questions or requests from students to hold additional office hours or things like that, right? So making sure that, um, assignments as they are doled out, right, are equitable amongst TAs, um, and also that they, as I said, correspond to contracted work hours, depending on whatever that is at your institution. Um, and knowing those rules is really important. Um, I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, so one of the things, so I, I tried not, well, I don't know, I feel like I always fail, like, the, the rule of, like, not putting too much text on a slide, I never actually achieve that like it's uh um it is my well I suppose if that's my main failing uh I guess that's okay but um you can check out the whole document as at your leisure but basically the things I've got in here um are kind of one thing that I wanted to to kind of bring out um, out of this kind of experience of creating this document is that defining the role of the instructor is just as important as defining the duties of a TA. So while I'm not going to read through all this, um, one thing I wanted to highlight is making sure that the TAs and instructor agree, that everybody agrees on what the role of the instructor is, is really important in order to establish this kind of relationship. So like I said, I've seen... Um, several of these kinds of documents uh, where the only duties that are outlined are those of the TA and not of the instructor, which leaves, basically means that there's not kind of, that means we're not starting off on the, the same foot of kind of collaboration, I think, in a lot of ways, if we're not talking about what the role of the instructor is as a group, right? Um, but it also means that the TAs aren't totally clear on what the role of the instructor is right um which can lead to kind of to conflict um can i if i can uh, jump in super quick i just wanted to like complement that with it makes it less clear for tas what they can ask for because if you don't know mm -hmm. what the expectation is then it it's not clear if you're allowed to ask for whatever you know whatever thing it is uh, clearer communication prompter communication um work that stays within your contract hours like if there isn't i think if it's not clear what those expectations are then it makes it very uncomfortable for graduate students to ask their faculty to do something different um and and sort of feel like it's they might be overstepping or they might be offending someone and right it's not a good yeah. work environment yeah and i think um one of the other things about it too is that uh, I think we often as faculty don't necessarily think about what TAs might need us to do um, and outlining that from the beginning, what the possibilities are for things that we could be doing for them, um, uh, for, especially for those of us who may not remember as well anymore um those experiences or didn't have those experiences to begin with um for folks who weren't didn't have this kind of weird complex role um as a big part of their graduate experience um uh sometimes we need prompting to think about oh right if I'm going to ask you to grade something I might need to give you a rubric for that thing so you know how to grade it rather than me just giving it to you and assuming you know how to grade the assignment that I wrote, right? Um, so there's a lot of things like that that I think are worth prompting um, ourselves to think about as well. Um, uh, and then uh, one more thing that I wanted to flag out of this is something I already mentioned, right? Which is always keeping work hours and union contracts in mind when defining duties. Um, and one of the things that we were taught to do at Michigan 
<laughs> Thanks to Geo, the oldest grad union in the country. Um, was track work hours. And so, and I know that's something that is often really foreign to academics, right? This is not something we do a whole lot because if we did, we would just like cry ourselves to sleep at night. Um, but uh, especially when we're in charge of other people and assigning duties to other people, that's really important to think about how much time is it going to take you to actually do all this stuff? Am I assigning way more work to you than 20 hours a week, right? And uh, and from the graduate student point of view, it's also really important to keep in mind, right? How much time am I spending on this stuff? How much time do I have for my other classes that I'm taking or other duties that I have to do on my dissertation or whatever it is, right? Um, uh, knowing what the expectations are in terms of time investment is really important um, just in order to kind of plan your your term right to plan your week um so i suggest a kind of checklist like this with an estimated hours per week um one of the things that always kind of comes up is that uh sometimes especially in classes that have like exams right some weeks are really grading heavy and some weeks are there is no grading or whatever right so um average of hours a week i think is is usually how it's done um but I think uh, that's something to keep in mind as well, that you never really want, uh, even in those kind of grading heavy weeks, um, I think keeping an eye on how many hours a week it should be, maybe something that is um, also articulated in union contracts and things like that. So something to be aware of and be thinking about. Um, uh, yeah, okay. Um, so... I think that's what I wanted to say for now. Anything else you wanted to add, Amy? Um, I don't think so. I think uh, okay. I don't know. I think it's a great it's a great contract, and I love that you uh, set this up. It's yeah. I don't know. I think you did great. Thanks. That's so nice of you. Like, <laughs> no, no, um, ten out okay. of ten. <laughs> Um, so what I wanted to do before we so we're gonna have plenty of time for discussion and conversation. Um. If you have pressing questions, uh, you can feel free to maybe write them down or write them in the chat or something like that. And we'll get to them, I think, after uh, after we do this. But first, I want to do some individual reflections. So for three to five minutes, I'm going to have everybody think. Um, feel free to jot notes to yourself. Uh, but I'm actually going to like be quiet and give you time to think about some stuff. So if you had to articulate it in one word or phrase, what do you think is most important for creating and maintaining a positive relationship between TAs and instructors. Um, and if you kind of think through that and come up with an answer to that, what do you think are the most important things to establish right away? So what needs to be kind of first words out of your mouth in a meeting, right? Uh, in the first meeting um, between graduate students and, and um, instructors, grad, grad student TAs graduate student instructors. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to use TA because that's the insistent terminology. Um, so I want us to think about that, like I said, for three to five minutes. I'll probably set an alarm for four minutes. Why not? Um, and then we'll come back to the big group. If there's things that you want to not forget, though, feel free to type into the chat. Does that make sense? Okay. We'll be back in three minutes. <laughs> 